one of these times, one of these times, you're going to say hello to me before you hit recording, and it's going to be a beautiful day for me. I don't know when it's going to happen. It's going to be a surprise, and I'm <laughs> going to, I'm going to, ooh, a little, uh, a little pre-record chat, and I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, hi. 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 I'm using you? a new microphone. <clears throat> Check one, two. Hopefully, I sound normal, but. You, you sound, you sound normal. Uh. It was wonderful to have you visit yesterday. Now you know what my view is actually of what I'm looking at whenever we record these. And a disaster. A disaster <laughs> zone of chaos and cables and lenses and, uh, you know, just this handy, uh, great yeah, camera so, to have. Uh, so Sam, Sam's um, home has a small loft area where he has his desk, where he is uh, recording right now, and it is... A beautiful background if it was not set up to be a recording area it would be a wonderful like reading nook with yeah. a view of the backyard just exceptional stuff but instead it's set up to be a recording area which means um it is a disaster full of Ooh. 900 different lights cameras lenses <laughs> and plugs from usb things long past there, there are like at least a hundred dead cords up there that you haven't used in a century. Maybe I can make it a goal or I can aim to, uh, every time you come visit, you get to leave with something from up here, <laughs> I, <yes. laughs> whether you want it or not. That's my plan. I, to... So I have, I have two things. I, okay. we, we have, we have decision tree here. Okay. We have a, um, fun, silly thing that we could talk about today that I'm sure would kill like 20, maybe 30 minutes. Or we have a thing that makes me very mad that I could talk about forever. So are you looking for something that's a little bit cheerier or <laughs> something that's positive? Little, uh, keep unless it positive. Can either of them, can we put a pin in one or is it like time sensitive? Um, I mean, the, the, the positive one can... <laughs> There, there's a there's an internal clock for me to get the the positive one decided. I can't I can't give you Let's any do more. That. Let's do that. Okay, we are recording like this, this on April fourteenth, twenty twenty three. This last year, I was in charge of um, the glass holiday gifts. Uh, that's two years in a row now. We buy ourselves a little something something. The first year, we bought everyone on the team a print of a really nice photo that I took that we used in all of our early glass marketing before we launched. It's a photo of a um, tram in Amsterdam blowing by a sign at dusk with really pretty windows and the sign um, is an old like marquee sign on a it's, it's called the Arcade Hotel in Amsterdam and the sign uh, great, has said for name. years now be excellent to each other. And so like Tom used that photo. It was a photo that I took walking home from like the first coffee uh, date uh, that I yes. had with Tom where he showed me the designs of what would become glass. Uh, so there's like a lot of like nice little history. So we have a nice, very nice framed print of that. So that was our, that was our first holiday gift. Our second holiday gift. I was very excited about this. I was going to quote and get made glass neon signs. I've been seeing those a lot at weddings. Right. You yeah. know, like they're, they're, they're everywhere. They're, it's <clears throat> hip now. And like you can make them LED. It's relatively affordable. But it turns out it's not as affordable as you would like. Because we want, I wanted like real neon, not the LED neon. And then, so I quoted it out. I was extremely over budget mm. <laughs> for what it would cost to print a, uh, uh, you know, make a, make a glass neon sign, a, a glass neon sign. But it was going to like be behind us. It was going to like make my recording oh. area look really great. It was going to like work it into the mosaic of, um, like framed prints behind me, that sort of thing. It was going to be beautiful and it was going to be a bright, uh, prime YouTube backdrop sort of thing. How much is it? Well, so it was um, before shipping, which is a problem because we're an international living, right? You know, Glass is a U.S. company, but oh, uh, sure. we are all over the world and shipping glass like physical neon glass is super dangerous and yeah. hard. So without including shipping, it was going to be you know, like five to six hundred dollars per piece. Oh wow! And then all shipped to me, and then I would have to ship them out 
to get them safely across the Atlantic Ocean. So the idea didn't work out. And all of this was as we were planning to move to Baltimore and like getting the, you know, I, I was getting quotes in um, November of last year, which is when we started looking at Baltimore. It's when you and I started doing the pre-production for the podcast. So like there was a lot going on. It was very busy. So I didn't find out that this was an untenable idea until like, I don't know, January 15th, <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe January 30th, maybe my birthday at the end of January is when I found out. And so we did not gift ourselves our holiday gifts. Cause that was, that was my bad. I, uh, hmm. I take full responsibility for the glass team, not celebrating the holidays appropriately. So a couple of weeks ago, Tom took matters into his own hand and was like, I've got an idea. We're Just doing the this. one hand. Just the one. Mm. It, it, well, it's a single, it's a single handed gift. Uh, so okay. he and, uh, Stefan bought the ember mugs which is the usb power oh yes i have one of those of course you have one of those they're (laughs) a trendy knickknack under 200 dollars. that sounds like that sounds like an insult but it's actually a superpower today so uh they they bought these mugs they're having a wonderful time with their mugs i don't drink tea i drink coffee and i am very um regimented in my coffee drinking meaning what really specific I'm, I'm very specific in how I make it. Um, I'm, I'm very specific on the beans I use. Oh, wow. I, you know, so like... What do, you, do you have... Is this coffee or espresso? Like, do you coffee. Use it? Okay. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a poor, I'm a poor over man. Okay. Uh, my, my two preferred methods are uh, the... My go-to is a Kalita Wave, which is a drip pour over maker that is uh, just the top. And then you either put it over a pitcher that is a glass blown pitcher for it. Or you put it over the top of your mug and you just make your coffee directly into your mug. Uh, it is a Japanese-based company. Fancy. The holes... Uh, this is what I'm talking about, right? So, like, the Haribo or, or Hario um, drip coffee, which is the normal one that a lot of people use that put on top of their mug, all concaves down into a single point, yeah. which can give you an uneven brew and you can over extract your oh. grinds at the end if you're not being careful. <clears throat> so it's a lot harder to get a consistent, perfect cup of coffee. So I being, uh, the white coffee man that I am with disposable income. Mm. Yeah, sure. Coffee connoisseur is also mm. another way to say that. I, I use a Kalita Wave, which has uh, a flat bottom that has two or three drilled holes in a triangle with ridges between them at the bottom, which means you're less likely to over extract and uh, you get a more consistent brew every time you brew. That's my usual setup. And then I have a, you know, a very nice, very quiet burr grinder, nice mugs. And I had no a, idea <clears throat> you were this into coffee. And a variable temperature um, gooseneck for the actual pour over part. All of that is currently on a truck in El Paso, not here in my home. See. So for the first few weeks that we were here, <clears throat> Uh, for the first week that we were here, we just walked down the street and we would buy coffee at a really bad coffee shop down the street, uh, oh. like to the point that I drank half a cup of coffee a day and then poured out the rest because it was gross. Maybe you could scoot there. I don't think you could walk. Ceremony coffee is quite good. It's in Harbor East. It's, it's not close enough for a morning. Yeah. So then um, then I started going to uh, the Whole Foods down the road, which is like a mile away from us, but it was a fast enough thing that I could scooter bike down. And I would buy Stumptown cold brew concentrate because like Chameleon or any of the other cold brew concentrates are just uh, whoo, bitter trash to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I bought the most expensive cold brew that I could, and that's what we did for coffee for the first two weeks after nice. our single week. So that was our first three weeks. And then I finally caved and just said, you know what? Camping's a thing on the East Coast. We love to camp. We're going to go camping as soon as, you know, when our stuff gets here and the weather gets nice in the fall, we're going to go camping. So let's just get our camping set up. So I bought a second <laughs> stovetop uh, gooseneck thing wow. and a uh, and a second kitchen scale and a chemex and chemex filters and a hand burr grinder so i can grind my beans to the correct thing 
I expected our stuff to get here on time. And so mm. I signed up for our coffee subscriptions on time oh, because okay. I have my preferred coffee subscriptions. I split my coffee subscription between Yes Please Coffee, which is Y-E-S-P-L-Z dot coffee. Please go sign up for Yes Please. They're wonderful. Uh, friend Feature of the show, but not the show. Yeah, not a sponsor. Just <laughs> no, exactly. just a fan. So that's uh, so I get two bags delivered a month from them, and then once a month I get three bags delivered from uh, my favorite coffee roaster in the entire world, which is based out of Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, a company called Coffee Collective, which is what we drank. Ooh when we were in uh, Amsterdam. So, I don't know, you shouldn't be drinking coffee that was roasted, you know, more than nine days ago. Have you ever roasted your own coffee? Like down to that Uh, Just the once, just the once. So you, the coffee part is not the important part of this. Okay. This is why I can't get an ember mug. That's why. The, that was a really long way of saying the wow. ember mug is not for me. Because <laughs> uh, okay. I drink my coffee yeah. and, you know, there's uh, your coffee loses a lot of the flavors and a lot of the acids and a lot of the tannins uh, the longer that it's exposed to air. Sure. Yeah. So it's not just a temperature thing, but the longer it's exposed to air is part of the problem because, you yeah. know, coffee's a produce, not a... Uh, sure. Not not a, a grain or anything. Does it upset you to know that sometimes I will start drinking a coffee that's hot, forget about it, and come back like four hours going. later and finish it as a cold coffee? <laughs> oh, yep, that's bad. There was a <laughs> there was a there was a coffee shop that I worked out of in Chicago many many years ago when I lived there that would just take their last brew, like their big their the the big bucket of like the drip coffee, and mm-hmm. just empty it into a jug and then they put the jug in the fridge and that was the next day's iced coffee oh yeah anyway yeah. Whew, that was rough uh <clears throat> they they have since improved their cold brew i so the, so the ember mug is not for me that's a really long way of saying the ember mug is not for me so i have a holiday gift to buy myself <laughs> Okay. And I don't. <laughs> so Why I have I have two hundred dollars, okay. and my budget is two hundred dollars. I have I have two options that we need to beat. Right, I have a creative option that is like, oh, this is a good thing to spend money on. This will help me do more creative things and spend time with photography, doing the hobby that I love. Okay, and I have the purely selfish. This is a this is a dumb thing that I don't need that I want. And I haven't bought mm. it yet because it's too expensive for me to buy on what my are own. They? What are the two? Things? Okay, so the too expensive thing that I don't need but I want that I would just spend if I was you know like independently wealthy. I would have bought this years ago uh, or, or a year or two ago. It is called a. <laughs> uh, it, it's called a pepper cannon. <laughs> A pepper so, cannon? So pepper cannon. It is a very popular oh, pepper grinder cool. on uh, food YouTube. Do you add pepper to like every yeah. meal? Yeah, I love, love pepper. I cook, okay. I cook two to three meals a day. Uh, during the weekend, I will cook a very long meal, that sort of thing. Like I, I love cooking. I used to work in kitchens. It, cooking is a thing that oh, comes me down. Are you just makes me dying without all your kitchen stuff? Or have you just, yes, I yeah. am literally dying without all of, all of my kitchen stuff. It is brutal. This thing uh, is li- exactly two hundred dollars. It is exactly two hundred dollars. So it's a two hundred dollar so pepper much? grinder. But if you watch the videos of how much pepper this pepper shoots out of its grinder, Hence the name. while a single a single crank is like. We're, we're talking like five to ten cranks of a regular pepper grinder. Wow. It's bananas. And one of my go-to, one of my go-to lunches is a chicken Caesar salad, which requires a lot of extra pepper. So like mm-hmm. a couple of cranks of the pepper cannon suddenly <laughs> were set. Top, top question on their FAQ. Isn't $200 expensive for a pepper mill? Yes, it is. And a Ferrari is expensive compared to a Volkswagen. <laughs> See? So we're, we're talking about the Ferrari of pepper mills here. So I'm <laughs> like... I, I would have bought this pepper all mill. Analog. There's no electronics. It's not like it's no. Got it's it, it is just in any, yeah. Wow. It is just a. It is just a really well manufactured out of like, you know, whatever surgical grade aluminium or okay. whatever it is. I am uh, now. I'm without having heard yet. I'm leaning toward getting the photography thing because this is hilarious. For wow. Me. 
Uh, listen, Pepper is great, and I'm like to be clear, I'm probably going to end up doing both of these things eventually, <laughs> right? Okay. Like we we are still you know saving to rebuild our finances after a large home purchase and international move. If I don't buy this Pepper Mill this year, it will be a thing that I own next year at some point, yeah. right? Like the this, the Pepper Cannon is going to be in my life. It's don't nice worry. You, ha- you have the tradition of uh, giving. Of, of failing, <laughs> Give, of no, failing to get a brand gift for ourselves, so then we just have two hundred dollars. Yeah, I doesn't. know that's. <laughs> this could be this could be my twenty twenty three glass gift, but we're okay. trying to figure out twenty twenty two. So the the other option, the creative option that I have spent a lot of time trying to figure out was you know like should i buy a cheap old lens off of like ebay should i uh, should i buy it's an old tough camera to find should something I... cool i'm curious what it is around 200 dollars with photography that's tough to pull off right the the thing that i've landed on i really enjoy um publishing designing making little photo zines and little photo books and you know like little like saddle stitch or uh like newspaper or whatever and just like making little things right now i'm doing a um a little project where I'm like selling postcards, right? Like I, I printed a bunch of five by seven postcards with really nice photos. Each one's a different photo. Where you, do you uh, order prints from? For postcards, I order them from moo.com. Oh, moo. <laughs> they were my OG business card. Uh, they're still killing it. They're yeah. still, the, their business cards are still killing it. Also my OG business card. I I wonder what it is about Moo that everybody who's like, I need my first business card at some somewhere in their uh, funnel, they've got it nailed to <laughs> Yeah, they to they they've they've yeah. really uh, dialed in that like slightly disposable income uh, creative thing. It's because they let different designs be on each card. So you can order a hundred oh, okay. cards and have a hundred different photos or I want, maybe it's up to 25 or limited now. So you can have up to 25 different designs. So you can print 25 different photos on your business card on one end and then flip it over and there's your information. So they do that with postcards. They have really nice postcards. So I order, um, I used to do this all the time. And so this is the first time I've been able to do it in a few years because I've been living internationally. I order 25 different prints and then I put them up for sale for like 20 or 30 bucks and you buy it and then I write you a little love note or whatever you want, right? Like a little love mm-hmm. note, a little story about the photo, what I like about it, whatever. And then I send it to you in the mail. <laughs> And so you get your photo print, but it's also a little screwed up from being in the mail and a little bent and a little scratchy. And it's like, it adds this nice uh, patina in addition to already being a one of one print uh, that's only, you know, only ever going to exist in this format, that sort of thing. So it's just a really fun way for me to share art relatively affordable because people, every photographer ever, both undercharges and overcharges for their prints, right? Like buying a print from a photographer is like... A Outrageous. tough thing to navigate, and they are insanely expensive for what I charge for clients. Yeah, it's outrageous. Totally. Agree. Yeah, right. Like buying a, you know, like one of my, we we well, have a lot it of. It is walls also here. tough to make prints that last decades. Like right. things it, deteriorate. It, like it's an expensive thing. Yeah. Framing is like the most outrageous thing yeah. in the world. It shouldn't cost, you know, seven hundred dollars or whatever to frame My friend something, but it has can. an entire side business of just a framing company. That's all they yeah. do. And they have like one billionaire client who basically props up the entire company. But that's yeah, all you need. Yeah, just the one billionaire client. Uh <laughs> but they he gets like mirrors framed, you know, obviously uh, artwork and paintings but it's so crazy because I'll just go hang out at his place and he's like, oh yeah, that's an Andy Warhol just like on the floor in the basement. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. Billionaire clients, man. That if you Great work if you can get them. Well, no, terrible work if you can get them, but uh, profitable work if you can get it sometimes. Sure. Anyway. Continue. So, so I, I really like making little things and like little physical projects and like doing like small run prints and photo zines or whatever. One of my, one of my favorite ways to do it is uh, newspaperclub.com. It's a printing press out of uh, the UK and they make really great full-size newspapers, tabloid-sized newspaper, or uh, what they call minis, which is a smaller version. That's this a is awesome. Such book. This yeah, is so cool. They are newspaper beautiful. Newspaperclub.com. I love it. They're they're like they're I just I just really adore them, right? Like so you it's have to a do really broadsheet, which is like an actual newspaper, tabloid, which is smaller 
magazine. It's like a, it's like, it's like a, a weekly size, right? So like, yeah. you know, you go figure out where all the punk bands are playing that week in 1999 cool. or whatever, and you get a tabloid size. And then there's the mini size. It's like a six by nine, give or take. It's, okay. uh, it's in uh, UK paper sizes, which is uh, slightly different than American sizes because they are on top of things and we are not. Oh, so and it's a better size, you think? So, I, I mean, it's a, it's a slightly better size. It's just a fun size. It's a different size for us, but it's how the UK and Europe does like their papers with A1 through 5 is the same way that like centimeters and meters and yeah, uh, yeah. millimeters work in this, you know, so like... We're just over here like, hmm, he is eight and a half by 11. That's a normal size, right? Like We have to be different. Uh, yeah, it's a, it, it was in the Declaration of Independence. You <laughs> sure. know, we're going yeah, to was... not do taxation without representation <laughs> unless you live in D.C. And we are going to, you know, fuck up science everywhere by just having an absurd imperial measurement system. So anyway... <laughs> So, newspaperclub.com, I can print a mini photo book, right, in their in their mini size. Um, I want to say I can get 30 copies. It's 20 or 30 copies of a 24 or like 28 page book. I can't remember, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's someone it's a, it's a small enough it's a small print run of a photo zine. So, I can get a $200 gift card and f- for almost oh. exactly $200 be able to I think do that by far. Do that. That's that's way more interesting than the pepper cannon. Wow. I thought that. Well, so this is. (laughs) These are my options that I have. I'm not asking you to pick my options. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'm telling you, uh, that's what you should do. (laughs) Okay. A. uh, I would love it if you got me a pepper cannon for a housewarming gift. B. I was working but, on a, a gift, actually. Uh, that's why I randomly asked for your shoe size out of the blue. Hey, uh, unfortunately, the awesome slippers I wanted to buy, they don't ship to the U.S. Wait, and, what awesome shipper slippers? Uh, glare ups? Are you a glare up man? No, no. I Is it sh- Snoop Dogg? I should have shown you them. I have, I have a pair. I should have shown you on the house tour. Sorry, I didn't. But oh, uh, I'm, I'm I will heartbroken keep that, that you in didn't. Memory bank. Is this the right site? Man Kitchen? Man yeah, Kitchen. Yeah, Man Kitchen. I mean, yeah. listen, you don't need to buy me a pepper grinder. I'm going to buy myself a pepper grinder, maybe. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll so buy what? It. If you have one, uh, I'll keep it for myself. Ooh, here's the thing. You get the pepper cannon, then you kind of have to also get the salt cannon, which is also so, $200. I don't want, I don't want the salt cannon because I am a uh, diamond kosher salt man through and through. Okay. And then for my finishing salt, I use Malden salt. Ooh, like, I literally have really a tub. Nice. I have like a three pound tub of Malden salt in our thing because it's like 25 oh my bucks God, to get. The steak knives. Oh, these are badass steak knives. I think I See? will be buying a gift for myself today. See? <laughs> See? It's a, it's a dangerous website. Yeah. So, every time we have our team call on Wednesday, Tom and Stefan are just there sipping their holiday gifts Ember. you know oh. like sipping sipping out of their holiday gifts and then reminding me that i do not have a holiday gift yet and that like it, it's like an outstanding do, item do on i'm excited do that first whatever well, okay but so you mr uh mr mr sam <laughs> knickknack heard have many a thing so i'm wondering don't want that to stick Is do it? you have a two hundred dollar purchase or less that is better than a pepper cannon <laughs> oh. or a photozine, right? Like as a let, let's yeah. let, we can even keep it s- strictly to photography, right? Like I, I'm not expecting you to come up with a better kitchen item for two hundred dollars, but mean, like yeah, uh, what is a what is a two hundred dollar or less purchase that you have made for photography? That has been. You could buy two of them for two hundred dollars. It's closer to a hundred bucks, and it's uh, they. There's a newer version. I'm going to see if I can find it from from Godox, the um, flash company, light company. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I can see it, but the one that I have is called the Bowling, B O L I N G L E D video light uh, RGB video light. It was the first, it's called the BL P one is like the model number 159 bucks. They've raised the price. Uh, this to my knowledge was the first 
like back pocket sized full you know rgb color spectrum led light that was usb-c powered lasts forever uh, it was the first one on the market that i came across ever i just randomly found it on amazon one day the old kind of handheld video light that I used to use was all double A powered. It was from a previous era and that thing was like four hundred and fifty dollars. Something something massively changed in the manufacturing process of LEDs that just dropped the cost in the past like five years. And so that one uh, I bring to every wedding. If I shoot um, a night photo, especially, it's generally lit with the bowling pocket LED video light. Godox also makes one. I think it's a little cheaper and it looks exactly the same. Like Godox is kind of known now for just ripping off kind of the Amazon model of, oh, these are our most successful selling products. We're going to make a clone of it and sell it for half price and make all the money as Amazon. Anyway, that would be my first go to thing. Now, that's a problem in that maybe for you you don't i don't know if you could do if, if it would be useful for like self-portraits and stuff i don't know but i for, mean i also did just come in possession of two uh really great led tubes yes that you did. are like really did well you play lit. around with those at all yeah so yesterday so I, I went and hung you out go docs let's see if i can get the model number while you talk about it it's the it's the the model number that you gave me. It's the like TL 120. It's oh, like okay. a it's a it's a four foot <laughs> LED <It's huge. laughs> light. Uh, so I went uh, I went over to Sam's house yesterday to say hello in person, uh, hang out for a bit, and uh, borrow a, a little bit of camera equipment for some stuff that Glass is working on because I knew that Sam would have said camera equipment and then he was like oh while you're here do you want a pile of lights <laughs> and uh it was while we were upstairs in his recording nook uh mm-hmm. and he pulled some lights off of a couch that was covered in more lights so there are some there there's more where he gave them but he uh very graciously has has provided two lights so uh when when this glass project in the, in the next couple of weeks launches and you're like damn daniel's lighting got great <laughs> it is because sam has already provided <laughs> provided for me his, uh some lights i have so, so many lights that i've purchased and then when they don't work out i don't return them i just kind of keep them so if you need any more i don't know that i have awesome tube lights like that i think i'm at my i'm actually using all the rest that i own but i have a couple of other really ones, yeah. great, yeah. yeah. But I don't, I so I don't know if I need a small, a small pocket light, especially since I'm not shooting professionally, right? Yeah. So like, I'm not trying to light. So, Is that the same light that you used to do your RGB uh, triple exposures? Yes, because I've had two methods of doing that. One is, uh, yeah, in camera triple exposure of light painting people three different colors. That's actually the easy method. The other method that I use is a triple exposure uh shooting each shot through a red a green and a blue filter of glass not a gel but like a really high quality piece of glass and what's cool about that if you hold the camera steady and shoot through red green and blue and you stack them i don't remember which blending mode it's hsl right like the hsl blending mode for it's like this is a this is a thing that uh no, the Canon blending mode um, is different. It's it's uh, oh, okay. uh, I'm talking like in camera. So um, it's gotcha. uh, they give you like additive, dark. So there's four different blending modes. Anyway, doesn't matter. Anything that doesn't move from one shot to the next is just normal color. Uh, that's essentially all a sensor array is made up of is red, green, and blue pixels. I think there's usually two greens for every red and blue. But anyway, if you keep the scene steady and actually have an object move like a person, they will be left with, they don't have all the full RGB color data. So they're left uh, against the white wall, they turn yellow, magenta, and cyan. And against the black wall, they turn red, green, and blue. Uh, with this That's like, awesome. cool imprint thing. And it's really awesome when it's in camera and you look and you see it on the back and you're just like, whoa, clients freak out. Really interesting, fun effect that uh, yeah, I used to teach about a lot. How did we get on that? Okay, so another $200 thing then that you could actually use. I mean, like, keep it, keep them coming. It doesn't, it, you know, this is going to be helpful to other people too, I right? Know, you know, know, like, 
yeah. a dozen people just bought that light because you recommended it. So let's keep this train going. There's let's a see. Cool I'm one. Yeah, I just love this idea of like controller called a tour box. That's 225 bucks. That's kind of cool. I don't think it's as fast as Better Touch Tool, which I use for custom keyboard shortcuts. But it's pretty neat if you Google it. It's uh, if sometimes I like using. Um, hardware Lightroom controllers just to change up the repetitiveness of working with a keyboard. Uh, with Better Touch Tool, you can only use a keyboard. Uh, the Tour Box is almost like a really advanced game controller that's totally customizable. Uh, they just created a Bluetooth wireless version called the Elite, and it's 225 bucks. Wait, do you, is that why, do you use a game controller to edit or to call or to, is that why there are like little oh, game yeah. controllers all over Did your you notice homes? That? Yeah, I've got yeah. like, I, I, they're so small. I would always, I had one and I would always lose it and, or not have it with me. So I bought like 10 because they're like $6 little game controllers. That specific controller I have for calling only. I have it set up to be able to call. And then sometimes I'll use two. It's like one in each hand, just like sitting on the couch, like, you know, really relaxed. But yeah, you can just set it up so that one button flags, one button unflags, and then next and back. So yeah, I call using that. It's a lot more, uh, it's just faster and more fun than using the, the arrow keys. Also, well, do you, you call at all now? Right? Yeah, like, or, because I use AI calling, it, it knocks down the, the physical number of photos I have to look through, but I still take a manual pass. The AI, the way I have it set up, it gives me about half the number of photos to look at than what I gotcha. took. Definitely saves me time, but I still take a manual. That's the, still the most tedious part of the whole process. Is, is <laughs> of shooting 4,000 photos yeah. to give, you yeah. know, to someone. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, the little game controller. Now I always have one somewhere. I can find it. It's like it's like guitar picks, you know. If you've ever played it's, guitar, uh, those things disappear into like some alternate reality, where all the guitar picks go. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this that someone would have. Like mentally, take a AirPods case, like uh, an AirPods Pro case, and uh, make it a little wider and a little shorter. And that's the game controller that he's talking about. It's like a it's like a game controller that you would buy to hook up two controllers to your iPhone so your kids would shut yeah. up on a flight. They're like tiny kid controllers. It's it. So they're, they're really nice. They're on Amazon. Uh, I can try and find the brand name. Man, we should uh, tag some affiliate links this episode. <laughs> yeah, the game controller, by the way, it's kind of a, an annoying change up with the Apple Silicon. It's not that easy to find an app that will connect a Bluetooth controller and let you customize the key, the keys. It's kind of weird. It took me forever to find one. There's a bunch in the store, like the app, Mac App Store, but like none of them really work. Uh, the app, once you've got the joystick or the controller connected over Bluetooth, it's called Joy Mapper Silicon. Uh, you can just download it on GitHub. And that is the app. You, it used to be called Joystick Mapper, and then there's another one called Joy Key Mapper. Both of those work with the Intel chips, but you need the Joy Mapper Silicon app to work on the newer. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty great. Okay, let me see. Controller. So it is called the 8-Bit Do <laughs> Zero Two bluetooth keychain sized mini controller yeah yeah it's like it i i it's can't cute. express how small this is it's a cute little thing yeah. i don't know how you would hold it in your hands and not have that hurt uh it's uh i don't know i mean I, you know maybe the manual pass on culling takes me 15 minutes it's not like a very long duration okay and then like i said uh, sometimes i'll hook up two at once and have one hand doing like the next photo and the other hand doing flag on flag so i can like put my hands anywhere and relax. Like I don't have to have them in like an awkward desk yeah. position. If that makes sense. Uh, okay. So there, that, that's enough. How much are they? How much are you, you were oh, looking yeah. at it? How much is it? Like seven bucks, 10 Eight bucks? Bit do where'd it go? That's on my other side. It is also the battery life lasts for like ever 20 bucks. Okay. 20, 20 bucks. Yeah. It seems uh, to be that everything I buy increases in price after like six months. I don't know why. Or maybe that's just inflation. Okay, yeah, 20 bucks. No, it's not inflation. Inflation's not real. This yeah. is not, we're not actually in an inflation crisis. We are in a greed oh, crisis okay. where corporations are jacking their prices up. That's why oh, I see. Yeah. Shell is having record 
20 yeah. billion dollar quarters when it's like oh no that's just inflation no it's not it's yeah. literally just greed corporate yeah, greed they're, everywhere. they're taking back finally people got pay increases and now they're just taking money from the back. other direction of and the they're change. not yeah and they're yeah. not real pay increases because it's like yeah whew, anyway the government sent us cool two thousand dollars once yeah. to half of us and corporations like that's too much man <laughs> And well, 20 bucks is pretty be... reasonable for a rock solid controller. The battery life lasts forever. Only annoying thing is, unless maybe they've updated it recently, uh, it's USB mini charging, which is annoying. Um, yeah. Oh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a lightning charger. I don't know why. No. Uh, I do anyway. have wonderful universal cables. I can also recommend to people it will make your life easier uh, by a company called, uh, let's see. Manem? Is this the Man-M. is this the cable that you have? So it's a USB C cable that has like three adapters yes. built into the end. Yeah. Yeah, it's got one end that has a USB C lightning and USB mini, and then the other end has USB type A and USB C. So you can kind of go in and out from anywhere. It's data and power. It's awesome. It's the brand is called Manem. Or No, that's the M-A-N- that's the that's the pepper cannon. <laughs> I know, no, no, but I'm looking at it right now. It is, it's M-A-N-N-A-M, Manum, USB lightning cable. I think they stopped manufacturing them during COVID for some reason. And uh, maybe now they're not on Amazon anymore. If you can find one, they're, they're great, great brand. There's a lot of these like universal cable things. The thing I really like about this one specifically is it's not one end with like a solid cable and then the other end with like three separate cables it's all one cable with just a little tip that changes so it's yeah much more like efficient to pack and stuff anyway they're great just google it if you can't i can't find it on amazon but so some cables we got some cables that exist what other sub two hundred dollars sub two hundred dollar oh uh, a little sensor cleaner Uh, let me get let me go grab it it's i can't read the brand Okay, we've got a sensor cleaner. Uh, Sam needs a sensor cleaner. He doesn't have his headphones on, so he can't hear me say this. But Sam needs a sensor cleaner because he doesn't close his lenses. This is, this is probably like forty bucks. It's called iLead. I with a Y E I E L E A D, and then it's uh, basically just got some sticky paper and gel, sticky gel tip. Um, so you just turn your camera in cleaning mode, and then you. There's no liquid involved. It just yeah. you just push it there. It, it, any dust specks will it, hopefully cling to this, and then uh, you stick it on the paper. Stick it on your sensor paper. Uh, that's super helpful, um, especially now with mirrorless cameras. A lot more dust gets in that because the, the uh, and a lot of mirrorless cameras default with the sensor uh, the curtain open uh, all the time. So I think people tend to get a lot of dust in there now more than they used to. So that's a great purchase. You can get that on Amazon. Oh, okay. All right. There's another one. What else we got? Keep it, keep it coming. Um, you're, I mean, like now that I know where you're sitting, you're surrounded <laughs> by all of your recommendations. So, you know, just like look to your right, look to your left, it's find tough, another tough thing. To find something that's under $200. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I could, if we hit 400, uh, I could save this Christmas gift to this next year. So, you know, I can, I can hold off. If it's, if it's better than a Zine or a Pepper Cannon, I can hold off. This is tough. By the way, I bought the new Google Wi-Fi. Yep. This guy? Yep, that looks like a Wi-Fi. No. I've had it for like six months. It doesn't, doesn't work. I can't get it to work. There's three of them. They're like these little cool satellites. I have the old Google Wi-Fi that works rock solid. It's great. But I was like, okay, this is the newer one. It's a little bit bigger. I bet it has better. Uh, it's also got the newer Wi-Fi standard. I can't remember what it's called, but freaking doesn't work. or whatever. It, it, it's like a DNS error. It can't get out to the, the wider internet. It's so silly. It's a brand new Google product. And I'm like, what's going on? So I'm assuming it's an issue on their end because I've tried everything. And I'm not an idiot. Except uh, returning My focus it. in my degree was network, like, computer networks uh anyway it's really annoying the so, only thing you don't didn't buy that. try is returning it <laughs> i assume Re- it'll, it'll work it. someday uh okay awesome tripod my all-time favorite tripod do i have it up here i have the box i'm gonna grab the box anyway he took his headphones off again as i was saying sam doesn't use the like little covers that cover his um 
the sensor and the uh, end lens. He'll just leave them hanging out. It's wild. I can't hear any of that. What? Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm just I'm just killing time while you're talking. It's a Manfrotto tripod. Okay, Manfrotto, a winner. It's called the Compact Light, yep. and it is super compact and super light. The thing I love about it is, first of all, it's cheap. I can look up how much it costs, but it's certain. It's That's like, like 120 eight. bucks. No, no, yeah. no, I think it's like 80. It's really cheap. Yeah, this whole top part, you know, telescopes up, and then you can actually take it out. So you can pack just this and then stack this part there, so you get just that that you need to find space for in your bag. So it's very, very portable, especially All right, if you we're have gonna to take a, We're going to take a bar. Hang it, hang on, hold that back up to the camera. We're gonna we're gonna take a sidebar here because this is going to be an exercise in Sam describing something for our audio listeners. <laughs> Sorry, it's a <laughs> regular black tripod. There's, there's really nothing visually unique about it other than that it's super light, super cheap, and like I said, the inner part, that's, the ball uh, the, the, and the, the center pylon yeah. for the. Oh, <laughs> the other big thing I love about this tripod is you. Thanks for having me uh, take a second look because I forgot. There's no hot plate or hot shoe plate required, whatever that's called. I can't remember. You know how the, you have to have that like secondary yeah, attachment? Yeah, the tripod plate at the bottom. Yeah, super annoying. This just has a straight up. So, you know, something super, super heavy, uh, you wouldn't be able to mount to this, but it holds like my R3 and any of the cameras I've ever shot with just fine. And you don't have to worry about it adding a plate. So that, which I also, those are in the alternate reality with all the guitar picks and uh, game little tiny game controllers. They just disappear. I don't know where they go. So tripod, so tripod plate is built into the ball head, and mm -hmm. then it's a compact light thing that That's you can take the center pole out of the tripod and then uh, pack it better. Packs much much yeah. easier. Yes. Yeah. Did so you know that you cannot fly through the Taipei Airport with a tripod? No. No why? tripods. No selfie sticks. Does it look too? Why? Do I don't know. I it, it was it was the it was one of the most stressful flight experiences of my life. I landed in Taipei and uh, I was flying to um, Cambodia to work with a medical nonprofit that I do photos and videos for on occasion. And so we were flying to meet a medical partner in Cambodia. We landed in Taipei and you have to go through security again when you land in a new country and went through security and the man grabbed my cam like the security guard grabbed my camera bag and was like no <laughs> that's <laughs> like the whole so thing and i was like uh weird. no i need that like i i really really need that and you know like we're having a language barrier thing because i don't speak uh i don't speak taiwanese and so i just keep saying no because like i'm i've been on a flight for 12 hours or whatever it is i'm exhausted and a man is just like trying to take the whole camera bag which is like at this point you know i'd rented a bunch of camera gear and we were going to do multiple days of photo shoots and video shoots with this partner so it's like huh. a 20 25,000 dollars worth of camera equipment that i think he's just trying to take and then he uh grabbed a laminated sheet for me that just had a big selfie stick on it and a tripod and pointed at it and said no and then took my tripod out and just put it in a box and like checked it for me so i had to go through <laughs> i had to wait for my checked tripod at at uh at, at both sfo and at wow um, interesting cambodians that's airports. crazy because i wonder if they're trying to cut back on like professionals maybe like they're doing work there without a permit like maybe they I could see. I don't know. Of, it was uh, wild. It was. Nice. It was truly one of the most stressful experiences of my life. And now I just think back on it and go, "Huh, I wonder why I hate <laughs> tripods." Mm, you should right? think you about know, like that in the moment, right. I'm dying and like my anxiety is exploding sure. out of my chest. Uh, but now I'm just like, "I wonder why you I need don't to, like tripods." Uh, I need never to hang on to that feeling. The next time you're in a stressful situation, be like, "You know what? Someday I'm gonna, I'm gonna be back here and think, huh." Yeah, unless you're like losing an arm or something. Okay, I pasted in the chat. Uh, this is a this is an interesting topic. To to, it's kind of maybe tough for a podcast. Uh, so if you're listening, maybe go to the YouTube. But it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> no, that's not fair. We, okay. We're not sending <laughs> yeah. people to okay. youtubecom slash photography. <laughs> like and subscribe. But we are going to accurately describe this with our words. Okay. Uh, I sent you links to two different pairs of pants that are. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, okay, we've got I, two it's a pairs new, of it's pants. It's a new season, and I like to assess my wedding. I have the I have um, 
basically 10 of the exact same shirt and like five pairs of the exact same pants so that whenever it's a wedding day and I need to get dressed, I don't have to think about anything. I just, I know my, it's like a uniform, but I want to change it up. I found these two options from the same company. It's called the, uh, Car so Car Lager Feld Paris, and then one is the Curve Motto Jogger, the other is the Core Modal Motto Pant. So I tend to dress in all black because you get a you get away with more casual types of clothing when you're dressed in all black. I find, and I like to be more casually dressed, even like a white tie wedding. Like I, I'm generally I'm not going to wear like a jacket and tie ever. Uh, because it just gets in the way. Plus, but people, I don't think, realize when they're like thinking about their wedding attire. Uh, as the photographer, you're you're strapped in camera crap anyway. Like, there's only so far you can push the fanciness. And most clients understand, like, okay, no tie because that's super annoying, gets in the way. So uh, I have been looking for a new pair of pants, something that is a little bit uh, more durable than my like eighty dollar black slim fit denim jeans that fade after a year and i kind of like i don't know i don't know if either are singing to you but i kind of think these this curve motto jogger pant is still nice enough to wear to a wedding but like casual and cool and it's got this cool side zipper that leads to nothing i don't know if you're looking at (laughs) it literally it is it is a a stylistic zipper for no reason european zipper yeah maybe you could hold a pen in it but it's literally just a zipper for design I, think, I, I already I think, have both pair, by the way. I already ordered them. <laughs> they, oh, okay. Yeah, they came <laughs> well, of today. course you did. But I'm curious what your opinion is. The, the I think these are great. I think so. We've got we've got a regular uh, slim fit looking jean that is a stretchy material, and then we've got same thing, but that ends in a cuffed jogger. Yes, uh, big fan uh, of that look. The that's the thing. The stretchiness of them is fantastic. I don't know what the it says. It's cotton modal which i guess is a material i've never heard of polyester and elastane so it's, it's definitely i mean got it's, it's a elastane. version of their uh you know the the just the stretchier pant that yeah. like oh it's kind of denim kind of not exactly uh, yeah but it's got this sheen to it that also looks kind of like nice fancy anyway uh i've always it's interesting to observe the range of styles and uh, I see a lot of videographers also that uh, have just a completely different style that they wear. Some go like full jacket during the reception and yeah, it's really interesting. But I think also videographers tend to not not have things strapped around them at all. So it makes a little more sense to have like a jacket during the dinner or something. I think it's silly. It's just too, too hot once you're like on the dance floor. Like why? Anyway. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm glad you like that. Okay, so I could buy these two pairs of pants. Yeah, they're both pretty uh, affordable as far as pants go. I remember growing up, like a $100 pair of pants, no. $100 pair of shoes, no, no, no. The most my mom would ever spend on any like one item of clothing was maybe $40. Well, that uh, that makes sense. You were growing up, right? Yeah, like you yeah. Were, you were about I to mean, be a foot high taller. School. I was but through high school. But anyway, uh, the modal pant which is the most like just the regular pair of jeans that are super comfortable 129 bucks and then the curve motto jogger is 105 bucks so pretty good prices overall. If, I, if i throw in 30 30 bones of my own i've got two pairs of pants is two pairs of pants better than a pepper cannon i don't think so that but. i don't think yeah if, if i had to decide but the the print from what was it called newspaper club newspaper club was fantastic i love that idea is the newspaper club still winning? So I have this dream, right? Um, I, I uh, one of one of the things that I do for startups when I have joined there in the past has been create their like HR policies, like help create their HR policies because the, they don't exist at startups, right? Like, yeah, you show up and you're lucky if you get health insurance your first week because they haven't figured out how to expand beyond california right and so like you set them up with gusto and at the time zenefits or whatever and we had this um it was for a travel app and i had this beautiful idea where i came up with this uh, after your first year after your first anniversary you would get to take a trip on the company's dollar 
and you would be able to take a week's vacation at that location and then work for an additional week. So the company would pay for your flights there, pay for your hotels there, and then you would have two weeks to hang out in whatever this place is, right? So nice. like you'd really get to travel as part of the thing because you know it's a travel app, it's for traveling. You gotta experience the traveling. We had this benefit that was you know like up to four thousand dollars will fly you. Anywhere in the world, you'll stay there for two weeks and then you can fly back, that sort of thing. Plan your own trip, we'll just reimburse you. Company didn't exist too long enough that anyone got to their one year anniversary, so no one got to use the benefit. <laughs> wow. But I have this, one of the one of the things, like one of our pain points with glass specifically, like Tom, Stefan and I, is building this thing and getting to use this thing are different, right? You know, like, even when we're commenting or experiencing the community or actively doing things, we're, we're working, right? You sure. know, like the, um, the, it, our work never stops. Yeah. You, you saw, like you saw this yesterday when we were spending time together, right? Like I was on my phone more than I wanted to be because I was like, oop, I got an email. Yeah, that, so rude. You know, I was, I was venting, I, you know, relationship it, crisis therapy and you were just on your phone ignoring me. I was just on my phone the whole time, like a jerk, you know? Uh, yeah. you know That's so a common like, issue. That's a common issue. Like, you know, work never stops now that email can come well, in not, at any Not time all of day. us can lose our phones as well as you do, Sam, uh, <laughs> or just not charge it. My battery is at like 12% right now. Oh my God. Sam, <laughs> Sam just doesn't charge his electronics until they're dead. That's a, uh, that's Sam's, this is Sam's insider info today. It's charging uh, right now. It's charging for you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you for doing that for me. Uh, so the, uh, we don't, we don't get to like, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're going to start doing meetups in a couple of months. Uh, you know, we're going to do a few on the East coast. And then in a couple of months after that, we're going to do a few on the West coast. Tom is going to do one or two in Europe and we're going to like Ooh, try it out. I, see I how it's like working to go to the Europe one. Of, of course I'll you want to go to the Amsterdam and London. We'll do a photo uh, walk. We'll do a photo walk. It'll be fun. Yeah, ex exactly. So we're going to do a meetup, we're going to do a photo walk, and then maybe do like a conversation afterwards with a photographer or just, you know, get a brewery to donate $100 worth of beer and fizzy water and hang out afterwards. You know, we still haven't figured out the details of what the meetups are going to look like. I'm so excited for them. It's going to be so much actual work for me mm -hmm. to get them done. Right. And to get the processes in place that it's easier for other people to host them once, you know, because like we, I don't want to be the bottleneck for yeah. hosting these things. Right. Like we're going to be able to by the time this is done, we're going to be able to have a little sign up thing that anyone will be able to hold a glass meetup anywhere they want. They just have to, you know, like, here's oh, how they do great. it. Here's how they submit to the calendar. You know, give us your address. Uh, two weeks before the thing, we'll send you a bunch of stickers and like some gift codes or whatever, right? Like it's going to be great. I'm, but like I am, I am already exhausted from the amount of work that's going to take to get all these systems in place and get all the test ones done. Even though I know that like in the moment day of my heart is going to explode with joy and like <laughs> I'm going to be more empowered yeah. and more um, motivated to do this work than I ever have ever right like i know that and so this this idea that i've had for a, a glass perk right a, a team perk is spending a week doing something right like doing something creatively doing okay. something Rope scores oh okay no just like spending <laughs> spending a week of your time instead of moderating comments or you know replying to support emails or you know doing product work or launching a new email or whatever doing a, a creative project, a, a photo something, right? So whether that be a photo zine or, um, you know, like taking a trip specifically just to photograph that thing and then have glass cover that. And I, nice. because my brain is full of worms, my, my idea is, okay, I will take the $200 gift card from Newspaper Club and I will then spend a weekend a long weekend here in my new city, walking around, taking a bunch of photos. I'll then design it as a zine. I'll publish the zine, and then I'll use that as the first example of the thing and create business content around <laughs> my fucking holiday gift, right? Instead of just buying a pepper mill <laughs> or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that is a much I'm better like, use of... That's fantastic. See, right, I know it's fantastic, but it's also like, man, maybe I should just buy a pepper mill, right? Like, not mm -hmm. everything needs to be a work thing. <laughs> Fair. 
But, so, uh, that, you know, that's, I know, the tedious stuff like content moderation and, and all that is, is pure work. But, you know, at least in photography, like, yeah, it can sometimes, like I mentioned earlier, the tediousness of having to call a wedding. It's like, but I'm still doing photography stuff. Like, this, yeah. is, this is work. But, yeah, that's tough to complain about taking a week right. this is a like to create a magazine <laughs> of your photo stuff <laughs> yeah right i understand that this rules right and that like i'm fortunate to be able to do this but it's uh some days it's like oh man i would love yeah. to not i would i would love to not do anything i would love just grind pepper with my pepper mill <laughs> fair enough sounds like you need a vacation well no uh i need to not move I think is the bigger thing. I need. I did not be having an international move, which is great. Someone uh, moving a is couple like of the, people like number two or three most stressful thing you'll do in your life. It's like divorce is number one. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's moving like, is number two or something. There's like death of a family member, yeah. divorce, and then moving, moving. Mm. and like throw in internationally you move. If I had to move out of this house. There's so yeah, much stuff. <laughs> you're never moving out of that house. You're, I <laughs> I I scoped out where I'm burying you in the yard. <laughs> I don't know why I'm the one that's in charge of burying you. Thank I don't you know why that. I took yeah. that responsibility. You know, it's weird. I hung out with a bunch of friends this morning. Uh, it was like four of us. We're all friends from college. We haven't seen each other in like five years. We were like, you know, the next time we see each other is probably going to be at our funerals. <laughs> yeah, one so, of great. one of us. Yeah, one of yeah. us is done. Well, that's sad. Uh, <laughs> what a, what well, a heartwarming we're all spread story. Out. <laughs> we're all spread out. It's hard to uh, you know keep up. And they all have kids and, you know. Trying to do well, anything with a kid is uh, yeah. Uh, make sure to put it in your in your uh, will and estate planning that Daniel is in charge of picking my burial site uh, for me. That'd be great. Oh, yeah, it's <sighs> it's on the official record now. Great, it's, it's and with <laughs> unless I die before this gets published. Yeah, podcasting is uh, podcasting is a legally binding agreement. <laughs> So uh, event planning that sounds awesome. I, it was a weird time when I was doing most of my in-person workshops that I realized, oh, I can just do all this from my, from my phone. This is wonderful because it was like 2012, 2013 that I started really hitting hard with workshops. And that was right around when apps like Airbnb started to come out at all, not just be popular, but were at least yeah. Avis got an app. And so I, I made a short list of like these tools that I would rotate through. There's a really useful, um, one of the big hurdles is finding a physical space to host types of stuff, these kinds of things. Uh, one really nice resource is called Peer Space. I don't know if you've ever looked at it, but it's literally the entire platform is so you can find a cool space to have a corporate event, a bridal shower, like meeting, photo shoot. They're just really interesting, quirky spaces all around the world uh, that are just listed on there. So I used to use Airbnb for that, and then that tended to be abused on the platform by people that like having. Yep. Now you can't have people over unless yeah, it, yeah. they're on the reservation, that sort of thing. Yeah. My plan is mm-hmm. to uh, just become friends with a glass member in every city yeah, and how, have them help me. Uh, that you were going to be my Baltimore guy, but you you don't live in Baltimore. You live in the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> it's Baltimore County. I mean, it is Baltimore County. Totally different like, governing body. Um, totally different taxes. Yes, you're, you're correct. I'm, just, also, I'm, 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 I'm not mm, making people drive, drive no, north. I have had workshops know? here. It works. It works. But uh, the parking, and then we're also kind of stranded here. There's nowhere we could like explore on a photo walk. Uh, if we went to downtown, uh, Fells Point, much better options. There's mm-hmm. some cool rentable spaces. So. Well, that's the other problem is I need to do this on the cheap, right? Like we don't, we don't actually have the budget to like rent a space for $500 yeah, for the afternoon. Yeah. So it's fine. I'm, I'm going to solve it. I'm going to become fr- my friendship powers. One thing you might want to consider is having a very cheap but uh, cost to entry so that people will commit because making something free tends to, you know, people just bail because they can. But if you make it like 50 bucks, something like that, that's just, I mean, I know you want to to be like a community building free thing so that anyone can come but maybe yep. just say like you know this is a cost to cover some of our overhead and uh to incentivize people to show up i don't know i think most maybe people i'll charge understand. twenty dollars and give everyone a free membership totally and then sure. maybe also put somewhere like if if you're in unable to afford that uh yeah. just write us a message and we'll take care of it something like five that. bucks everybody has to bring me a taco bell <laughs> doritos locos taco Ooh. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Now we're talking. Okay, and with that, uh, we have reached the end of this week's <laughs> great episode. Endless appreciation. Yeah. Great episode. Uh, I look forward to showing you my pepper cannon or yeah. um, selling you my photozine. Okay. Appreciate right. you, buddy. Appreciate you. Yeah.